Okay, so what is the point of completing the square? First of all, it just feels like something that we can do, but it's actually got loads of useful applications, particularly if you're planning to go and do maths at A level. So this little section about applications are gonna be examining what you can do with completing the square. And it kind of like adds a new tool to your belt about how you can solve quadratics and how you can understand more about quadratics. So I'd say one of the most important things that we can do with completed square form is to solve equations. So I've written here that the completed square form is particularly useful for solving equations, for solving equations as the variable only appears once. When you have an equation that looks like this, the challenge is that when you solve an equation, you're normally trying to get x by itself. That's how you're trying to figure out what x is equal to. And when you put something in the completed square form, you can find out what it is because it's just got the variable appearing only once. Let me just say what I mean by that. When you look at some of these completed square form at the end, there's only one x, one x, one x here, one x here, which means you can just manipulate the equation in a much more simplistic way that doesn't require any factorizing. Now, of course, there should be a word of warning here. When you see an equation that looks like this, I would not immediately go to completing the square. I would immediately think, can this be factorized? And if it can be factorized, you should do factorizing because it's less work, it's less work intensive, and you're just gonna be able to get the answer far, far quicker. However, this one can be factorized. I want to demonstrate to you that you can do completing the square and it will still end up at the same answers. So if this were factorized, you could very quickly see that this is just gonna be an x plus two and an x plus four being equal to zero meaning that either x is equal to minus two or x is equal to minus four. So let's try the completed square form on this one that we've got here. I'm gonna do the beginning part, it's just gonna be our x plus three squared minus the nine and plus the eight equals zero. So that is x plus three squared minus one equals zero. So now that we've got it written in this form here, we're not actually gonna be so bothered about making it staying equal to zero. We're just gonna use the kind of traditional solving methods because we've got the variable in one place. So that means I'm gonna plus the one to the other side like this. And to get rid of this squaring part, I'm gonna square root both sides. So when I square root the left-hand side, I will just get an x plus three. But when I take the square root of one, you get two answers. You get plus one and you also get negative one. So I now get that it could be equal to plus or minus one. So the last thing is to subtract three. So it's plus or minus one, subtract three, meaning that either x is equal to positive one, subtract three, which is minus two, same as up here, or it means that x is equal to negative one, take away three, which is negative four, which was the same as up here. So by having just one variable, you don't have to do any factorizing and actually you're less bothered about it being equal to zero. You just wanna use your sort of inverse operations to come down to what X is equal to. So I'm gonna try these two questions that we have here and then I've got two, or actually got three questions for you guys to have a go at. So this first one definitely looks like it can't be factorized. I can't think of two numbers that multiply to minus two but add to five. So you could do the quadratic formula, but I way prefer this. So I'm gonna start off by putting it in the completed square form. So I'm gonna half that B coefficient, that five, and I'm also gonna subtract that five over two squared, which is 25 over four, minus two equals zero. So I'm gonna put this minus 25 over four and this two, I'm gonna put it to the other side. So they're both gonna be positive numbers. And you know what? I'm gonna be a bit lazy. I'm gonna do this on my calculator. So on my calculator, I'm gonna do 25 over four plus two, 25 over four plus two, and that is 33 over four. Obviously we could have done that without a calculator. So now I'm gonna square root both sides. So here I am doing the square root of both sides, okay? I'm gonna get the x plus five over two, and that's gonna be equal to, let's just do the square root of this. Now, when you do the square root of 33 over four, that's actually the same as doing the square root of 33 over the square root of four. So we can do that as two separate things, okay? If we're gonna do that as two separate things, the square root of 33 is not going to be a nice number. So we're just gonna leave it as the square root of 33. But the square root of four is two. And any time you square root here, we know that there could be the positive or the negative answer. So my last step is to subtract the five over two. 
So we can either leave our answer like this, or we could say that x is equal to, and sometimes you might see this written the other way around, um, you might see it with the minus 5 over 2 first, plus or minus the square root of 33 over 2. Although this doesn't look nice, this is actually a really good answer. You may have spotted they have a common denominator, so if you'd like to, you could write it as minus 5 plus or minus root 33 over 2. Of course, you could calculate those things as decimals. So if I take the square root of the root 33 over 4 that we have here, there's the root 33 over 2, I could then take that answer. I oh, don't mean to square root the answer again. Let's just quickly do this. So we could actually just type the whole thing and we could do minus 5, minus 5 plus root 33 over 2. So x is equal to 0.37 to two decimal places. Or we could do the same thing with the minus in there. And we could see that x is also equal to minus 5.37 to two decimal places. But in A level, you will find you prefer the accurate answer rather than these ones. OK, so this equation that we have, it looks like it's going to be a completing a square where you have to factorize out the two. But actually, you don't need to do that for this. Because it's an equation, you're allowed to divide everything by 2. We wouldn't have been allowed to do that earlier on, because then we would have changed what the expression actually was. But here, because it's an equation, if I divide everything by 2, it's just going to make the completing the square part much nicer. And you'll notice I'm not even bothered about making it equal to 0, because we're going to be putting it in the completed square form. So when I divide by 2, I get y squared minus 3y equals, you've still got to divide the 7 by 2, which is 7 over 2. So now when I complete the square on the y squared minus 3y, I'm going to get y minus 3 over 2 squared minus 9 over 4. Now 7 over 2, I can see I want everything to be in quarters here, is going to be 14 over 4. So that's y minus 3 over 2 squared equals 14 over 4 plus 9 over 4, when I plus that 9 over 4 to the other side, and I'm going to get 23 over 4. Now square rooting both sides, I will get y minus 3 over 2 equals, well the 4 when you square root it, obviously we're going to have the plus or minus, the 4 is going to square root to 2, but the 23, 23 won't have a square root, so we'll write it like this. So when I add the 3 over 2 to the other side, I'll get 3 over 2, plus or minus the square root of 23 over 2. And again, you could put this in decimal form, or you could write it with this common denominator like this. This form that we have here and here is good, and of course decimal form would be okay unless they said exact form. So I have got three questions for you guys to have a go at. I've done some with some other variables as well, so that you know it doesn't always have to apply to x. I'm going to go through these pretty quick after you pause the video and have a go at them. OK, so for this first question that we've got here, I'm just going to complete the square on the beginning part. So that's x minus 4 squared minus 16, and I've still got the minus 20 that looks like this. So I am going to put that to 0. So that is going to be x minus 4 squared equals 36. Just jumping up here, when I square root both sides, that means that x minus 4 is equal to plus or minus 6, because the square root of 36 is 6. Obviously, you'll have noticed you could have factorised this, but we're practising completing the square here. So that means that x is equal to, when you add the 4 to the other side, you can either write 4 plus or minus 6, or you could have written plus or minus 6 plus 4. I tend to write this first version of it here with the plus or minus in the middle. So that means that either x is equal to 4 plus 6, which is 10, or x is equal to 4 minus 6, which is minus 2, which means it relates back to what it could have factorised at the beginning. It could have gone to x minus 10 and x plus 2 equals 0. That would actually expand to this thing that you've got here. So obviously the bit I've done in black is preferable, but I just wanted to show you that you could do it in this way. I'm not going to make it equal 0 if I'm going to do the completed square form. It's not necessary. So I'm going to say that it is n plus 2 squared minus 4. That's just completing the square on the left-hand side. I'm now going to add the 4 to the right-hand side. 7 plus 4 is 11. Square rooting both sides, n plus 2 is equal to the plus or minus square root of 11. So n is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 11. Now, you don't need to write them separately, but really it's saying that it's minus 2 plus root 11, or we could say that n is equal to minus 2 
minus the square root of 11. And in this one, you might write the other way around like this, but it really doesn't matter. Um, and you could calculate those to get the decimal versions as well. Okay, this one, you could do the harder factorizing, but actually, because it's an equation, you're allowed to just divide everything by three here. So that's gonna be y squared plus eight over three y equals four. Completing the square on this part, half of eight over three is four over three, and that's all squared, and that's gonna be minus 16 over nine. Now, because everything is in ninths here, I'm gonna put this as a fraction over nine. So it's four is the same as 36 over nine. Coming up here, y plus four over three squared is gonna be 36 over nine plus 16 over nine. I'm gonna be very lazy, 36 plus 16 is 52. So let's just quickly do 52 over nine. It doesn't simplify, so it's just gonna be equal to 52 over nine. Square rooting both sides, y plus four over three is gonna be plus or minus the square root of 52 over nine. So let's just square root that on. So we know the denominator will be a three. I wonder if root 52 can be simplified. Yeah, it goes to two root 13. So we're gonna have two root 13 over three. The square root of 52 is two root 13. I'm gonna have some videos on SIRDs coming out soon. So the last part is to subtract the four over three. So it's four over three plus or minus two root 13 over three, which again, you could write as one single fraction as minus four plus or minus two root 13 over three. And you could write them out as two separate answers like this if you wanted to. So this will give you like the same kinds of answers that you would expect to see from doing the quadratic formula. You can actually see the similarities with the quadratic formula with that plus or minus, like the kind of minus B plus or minus, blah, 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 like that. So it's got some, some similarities you might be able to see between them. And the quadratic formula is actually proven by using completing the square. So in the next video, we're gonna be looking at turning points and maximum and minimum values. Found this video helpful? Then why not drop it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. If you'd like the next video in the playlist, you can click here to be taken straight to it. And as always, wishing you the very best for all your studies.